In this screencast we're going to take a look at the Acknowledge Smoothing functionality. Acknowledge will allow you to run a smoothing function either as an online calculation channel or as an offline transformation. And there's two modes of operation for the smoothing, but they both work around the same principle. They're using a running average over a user-defined number of samples. And then there's two modes of behavior. One is uh, mean smoothing, whereby as the moving average is running through the data, the mean value is used as, uh, for the output of the average. And al or alternatively, there's an option for median smoothing, whereby the median value is used instead of the mean. The greater the number of samples you use for your smoothing, the more aggressive the smooth smoothing will be. In this wave um, file here, we've got three channels. This is a typical recording. We've got ECG on channel one, heart rate immediately below that, and then respiration. As you can see, the way the heart rate channel is calculated, it's basically a tachygram and there are discrete values for the heart rate at any given point in time. So you end up with this stair-step effect instead of uh, a smooth waveform moving up and down as the subject's heart rate is changing over time. And sometimes it's nice to smooth these out as opposed to having these um, unique stair steps. So if we go to the transform menu and select smoothing, I can just demonstrate what I mean by the aggressive nature of the smoothing. If I set this to 10 samples and we run this over our data, you can see there's almost no change there. This data was recorded at a thousand samples a second, so 10 samples is almost having no effect whatsoever. But if we just increase this up now, let's take a look at uh, 100 samples, for example. So you can see we've just started to take some of these um, edges away. We're starting to smooth it, but clearly 100 isn't enough. So if we go again, try 500, and now we've smoothed it out. So that's a good demonstration, and you can be, be even more aggressive. The thing you have to be a little bit careful of is you don't want to distort your values too much. If we go to a thousand, so this is a one second moving average at a thousand samples a second. Now you can see it's much, much smoother. So that's a good example of the mean smoothing. Now what I'm going to do is give a demonstration of the median smoothing and how that can be useful. Okay, so now we've got another file. And this file contains a duplicated waveform. The top one is electrodermal activity and the second channel here, or channel three as it's numbered, is a duplicate of the same waveform. This data was recorded at about 30 samples a second and down below we've got the output from a stimulator and the stimulator was firing pairs of electrical stimuli at a subject and the subject had electrodes on for electrodermal activity and the amplifier was picking up the electrical signal as it was being delivered to to them from the stimulator. And this happens quite often and you need a convenient way of removing this signal contamination without actually distorting the waveform. If we run the mean smoothing over this, the data will start to distort by the time it's removed these spikes. But the median smoothing is very good for handling this situation it works very well at removing rapid frequency spikes such as these from a relatively slow moving signal such as electrodermal activity. So if we go back to the transform menu and smoothing, I've got this set so that we're looking at the median smoothing now. 
I've set my sample at 20 which uh, remember this this data is sampled at 30 samples a second so this represents a reasonable amount of time 600 plus milliseconds and we can see that we've eliminated these particular spikes and what I'm going to do is remove the um, stimulator channel I'll scale these so that they're scaled the same and we can overlap them and now we can see that we've been able to eliminate these spikes without distorting the waveform and that's a good example of where the median smoothing works very well just to demonstrate this point a little further if we go back into smoothing and we change this to mean smoothing you can see we've still at that same level we've still got these spikes in there I'm going to do it one more time try it a little bit more aggressively you can still we've st you can see we've still got the spikes in there try it a little bit more okay still got some of the spikes in there not only that when we scale these the same and overlap them we can see that we've actually distorted our waveform so not only have we been left with the some noise contamination but we've actually distorted our waveform so that's a good example of why the median smoothing is much more f efficient for this type of noise problem you can see we've removed them there's little evidence of them there again we scale these the same overlap and there's no evidence of um, signal distortion we split those out that concludes this demonstration of the acknowledged smoothing functionality